guys, today we're going to be looking at arthropods, which some of you might refer to as creepy crawlies. So if any of my viewers have phobias of insects, spiders, or crustaceans, you have been warned. Welcome to the wild. I wanted to start out with arthropods for a few reasons. Although my first thought was the sponge, the most primitive animal, I jumped to arthropods because they're the most populous animal on the planet. You heard it right. They live on land, underground, in trees, in fresh water, and in salt water. Basically, they're everywhere. Three out of four animals on the planet is an arthropod. Let me guess, you're finding that hard to believe, right? Well, the phylum Arthropoda is huge and is made up of three subphylums. You have subphylum Chelicerata, subphylum Crustacea, and subphylum Euneremia, also known as arachnids, crustaceans, and insects. In subphylum Chelicerata, you can find some of my favorite arthropods, like spiders, scorpions, and horseshoe crabs, and some of my not-so-favorite arthropods, like ticks, mites, and sea spiders. In crustacea, you have, you guessed it, crustaceans. This includes shrimp, lobsters, crabs, and barnacles. In Euneremia, you have insects, centipedes, and millipedes. Most arthropods are small, less than one centimeter in length. However, some can get quite large. The king crab, for example, can grow to lengths of over three meters long from tip of one outstretched leg to the other. It's a large crab. <laughs> so you might be thinking, how are all of these different creatures considered so similar they can be put in one group? Well, despite their general differences in outward appearances, structurally and anatomically, these guys have a lot in common. I really tried hard to go out and collect live specimens of spiders and beetles, and I thought, hey, this is Florida. It's like bug capital of the world. This shouldn't be so hard. Well, I was very wrong because collecting bugs and finding a way to present them proved to be a lot more difficult than I originally thought. So, defeated, I went to the dollar store and I got some of these guys. And I know they may not be as exciting as the real things, but for these purposes, I think they'll get the job done. Now, these are all from one group. I'll give you three guesses as to which they're all from. Three guesses. If you guessed these guys are from subphylum Euneremia or the insect group, you guessed correctly. For these purposes, I'm going to be using this ant. All, yes, all arthropods have jointed legs and segmented body parts. You can try to get close enough. There we go. Those are so you have the jointed legs and then the segmented body parts. The segments of the body are called the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Sometimes the head is fused to the thorax, and in that case, it's called a cephalothorax. There's a really good example on this blue ladybug, where just the head attached, and then a huge abdomen. Cephala means head, thorax, smushed together. Unlike vertebrates, an arthropod skeleton is on the outside and is called an exoskeleton. It's a hard outer skin made of a protein called chitin. The top layer is known as the cuticle and is very thick and very tough. It's like their own personal set of armor. In crustaceans, the exoskeleton is sometimes known as the carapace and can actually cover the segmented parts of the body. These exoskeletons do have soft spots though. If they didn't, all bugs would look like this, very stiff. Any of their joints wouldn't be able to move, they wouldn't have joints and they probably wouldn't have survived that long in the grand scheme of things. Think about how hard it would be for us to walk around or with our hands down, straight legged, or to try and eat with no joints. Nearly impossible. They would have died out a long, long time ago. I'm going to be honest. I used to hate bugs. Actually, terrified is a more accurate description of my feeling towards them as a child. But now I have to say I like them and are really fascinated by them. 
Well, at least most of them anyway. Life on Earth just wouldn't be the same without them. In fact, life might not even be possible. Arthropods help recycle and decompose waste products. They help pollinate plants in their environment, and surprisingly, they're a very good food source for most animals. However, there are some arthropods that should be avoided. Flies, lice, fleas, and mosquitoes can do more than just make you itch if they bite you. It was fleas on the back of rats that transmitted the Black Plague during medieval time. Mosquitoes are very well known as the vectors of West Nile virus and malaria, and ticks can carry a multitude of diseases, most commonly Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Then there are some arthropods, like spiders and scorpions, which have poisonous venom that can be fatal if someone is bitten or stung. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at the specific groups of arthropods, and we're also going to be starting a very special mini-series called A Bug's Life. I hope you enjoyed your introduction into arthropods. Make sure to hit thumbs up and subscribe down below. Also, for pictures, fun animal facts, and updates on filming, make sure to check out my Facebook page and Twitter account, all linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time here in the wild. Bye, guys.